All right, hi there, this is Dr. Philly, and I'm going to go over a case that uh, the sonographer brought to me um, today, and uh, it's probably one of the most important cases uh, of any that I might show here, because this illustrates one of the biggest mistakes uh, people make. So the uh, sonographer brought this case to me, and she said it's a case of twins, and um, the history was to assess a chorioangioma. So you're already getting sort of distracted by the fact that there's some, you know, potentially crazy abnormality going on. Um, but the first thing that you need to start thinking about, as soon as you hear the word twins, the first thing is, are they monochorionic or dichorionic? And I'll cover that in, in other areas of the website. But... Um, suffice it to say that in this particular case, they are monochorionic. We do not have a previous scan on this fetus, on these fetuses, so we can't assess that, but we're going to look and um, you can see there's a single placental mass posteriorly. Uh, I'm not seeing one anteriorly. This is long now, so it also kind of wraps up laterally. And if you see this membrane here, it looks very thin. So we're pretty convinced um, I can't remember whether we knew or didn't know whether or not this was monochorionic before we started or not, but nonetheless, it, it is monochorionic diamniotic. So the next question after you decide that it's monodi is you should start asking yourself, how can I be getting tricked and missing twin-twin transfusion syndrome or what we also call unequal sharing? And um, so you're just going to, as you look through this, you need to be thinking, how am I getting tricked? So um, just to dispense with this, there is this large mass of the placenta, which is, um, let's see if we see it any, see, we see it here. And um, I'm just going to, this looks a little bright to me, so I'm just going to darken it up. Um, this it was a chorioangioma. And they're frequently located near the cord insertion site. They really don't cause, they look kind of scary, but they're not generally too clinically significant. Um, so we're just going to, in this case, this isn't really the point, but it's a nice example of one. Uh, so let's move on to um, looking at uh, the um, amniotic fluid in both of these fetuses and both of these sacs. So you can already see she's labeling it A, B. She's pointing at a membrane. Looks like there's great fluid here. Measuring a pocket over here. It's kind of big and a smaller pocket here. Of course, there's no label as to which baby this is. Um, the depth of the pocket is only 2.2. And we've got another pocket depth here in that same sack of 3.7. The one thing you'll notice is that the the um, the membrane is sort of concave inward. If, if uh, you know, you could say, well, it's convex outward. If you're using this as your reference point, I'm just going to call it concave inward. And the amniotic fluid in this sack is a little more echogenic than in that sack. So that's one clue that there might be a problem. But a, but. And now we're measuring another sack that's 8 centimeters. So let's just say all you knew is there's one sack with 3.7 and one with 8. Um, and those are different sacks. That would in and of itself be an uh, indication that there could be some issue going on. But I'm going to show you how if you just blew that off altogether that you could get completely tricked here. So... Um, I said, you know, I, I don't like the looks of this. I'm going to go over and scan myself. And, of course, as usual, it's a portable, so we got to crank the machine back up. So now let's just imagine here this is, we see this thing. It looks like a little membrane here. And so we're going to measure. We're going to say, oh, the amniotic fluid here is 2.4. And I'm just going to. I know this isn't perfect, but we'll say over here at 7.2. And I'm, I'm getting these measurements are off, off the screen here. Sorry. But um, here's the tricky part. I'm going to play this cine clip for you. So look right here. Here's the arm of a fetus. And here's its head. And look right here. 
and you'll see that there's actually a membrane coming here and another membrane coming here. I'm going to stop it right at that spot so I can have an arrow. So there's a membrane that comes like this, wraps around this extremity, and comes right back. So what's really happening here is that this is the fluid inside this sac. This fluid and this fluid are in one sac, and this fluid is in the other sac. So as this fluid gets even less and less, this this membrane will look continuous because this fluid basically goes down to zero. And that's how people get tricked. They start measuring this and this as two separate sacs, where really this is all one sac, and this is the separate sac. So that was a fairly, um, fairly experienced sonographer who got tricked. The reason she got tricked, she wasn't thinking about it. You, I, I cannot stress the importance that you have to be asking yourself anytime you see twins, ask yourself, how am I getting tricked and missing twin twin transfusion syndrome? And um, uh, again, we can cover twin twin transfusion syndrome, what exactly it is at a later time, or maybe in, in more of a lecture format. But this case is just to show the fact that. Um, it is super easy to miss, and, and it was missed. And unless you are thinking about it, you got to go back and look for it. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful. And thanks for your time.